designed for a 4,000 pound engine for 12 G's, which is 84,000 pounds of load, to be into the structure behind it, into the wing, into the different fittings into the wing. That's a big fuel tank and an ADI tank, all in uh, two of them, fuel and, and anti-injection and dampation fluid, which is also used in the water boiling oil cooling system. Now, if you, if you notice how hefty the wing is, it has to take all of that load, the total airplane weight plus the fuel weight plus all the oil loads and the hydraulic actuators and all the things that are in the airplane end up weighing about 10,000 pounds. And if you design for 12 Gs, then you have to have 120,000 pounds worth of lift on the engines and the load be able to take 120,000 pounds worth of load. So having something designed for 12 Gs at 10,000 pounds is quite a design uh, task. If you look from here out, this wing panel, which you can't really see because there aren't any control surfaces on it, this panel from here on out, British Hawker Sea Fury. Both, both sides are from the main uh, wing beam. These are the outboard panels. They were very efficient British designed wings. They would give the correct amount of lift at the high load. If you look at the wing tips which aren't on it, they would be a nice fair wing tip. And the control surfaces, it's called the elliptical wing. It's a very efficient aerodynamic wing. Where'd the landing gear come from? I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like it came from a very large airplane, and I don't know exactly which one it is from. It might have been an F-86, but I'm not positive. I'm more of the uh, internal systems is what I'm usually involved with, is what happens inside the airplane, and Bruce Olin was the guy who did the external aerodynamics, the external loads, landing gears, tail loads. He was the one who did those for the Quite an engineering marvel to and uh, to have made this and, and designed it. And unfortunately, without a sponsor anymore, Daryl Greenbuyer has the airplane for sale. So for somebody to come and help him finance this project for a very, very well-designed, fast airplane. So we have to wait for somebody who's really interested in coming up with the with the uh, the financing to do this. That's the important part for us. The interesting thing about this, this is Dreadnought at the Reno Air Races, and this airplane here qualified at 449 miles an hour, and you can look at how big the front end of this airplane is, because the uh, engine is four rows of cylinder long, four rows of seven cylinders each, 28 cylinders, and there's several exhaust stacks on both sides of the, air, uh, uh, of the engine right here. And it's a beautiful paint job, and inside the, uh, with the propeller of a Sky Raider on it to take the energy out of the engine and put it into the air requires a very big propeller. To cool the oil in this particular airplane, Dreadnought, uh, the people are working on the airplane right now, but what we do is back inside here, there's a coolant uh, radiator to cool the oil, and we have little bars out in front that spray water, not, uh, not the alcohol water, pure water, they squirt it out of these little holes in the bar and it hits on these little bars that are right, uh, tabs that are right here, breaks up the water and sprays it into the inlet of the scoop and cools the radiator. And there's a control door in the back that lets the air out. And when you go to race condition and turn on the uh, spray bars, these doors close without a slot about this big. So it's a reduced amount of airflow, which is a uh, reduced amount of drag. Any air you take on board the airplane is drag. It requires extra power out of the engine so that you can pull the plane through this air. So these are called 
cooling spray bars for radiators. What we've done in the, in, uh, in the water boiling system we have is we take these coolers, we turn them on their side, put them into a tank, and let the boiling fluid boil up through the tubes and out through a vent. And that's how the thing is done. It's called a change of phase of water and alcohol. It gives you a certain amount of heat by taking it out of the oil because it boils at about 163 degrees at 5,000 feet. And it cools the oil down to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit by doing that boiling. It's like uh, cooling anything that's hot with something that's cooler. Uh, the liquids are a much better way of cooling than air. And if you look at the wheels and brakes and the strut on this, this is the British Sea Fury, which came after the Second World War. And they used to have a British Centaurus engine in, which rotates a different direction. Well, when they found out that the Centauruses were very expensive and hard to overhaul, they decided to start putting other engines on the front. And the first engines that went on the front of these particular Sea Furies were, was the 4360. And then we put 3350s on them. And if you look at some of the other airplanes here at Reno, you'll see most of the other Sea Furies do not have British Centaurus engines, but they have American R3350 engines on the front. But there are only 18 cylinders. pilot's mother or father or friend or brother or wife can fly in the back seat. Uh, normally you don't race a trainer, but since this was the way it was built so that they can not only race it, but they can have fun flying around in it. The other racers that are Sea Furies all have the single canopy on that are not passenger type airplanes. And of course, if you look at the uh, back of the airplane, you'll see how, how big the tail is. And of course, it has a British emblem on the, on the side because it was a British airplane. So th this is uh, called Dreadnought. Dreadnought was the name of a big old battleship back in the First World War, that what the uh, British called their uh, battleships. And this is as, to us as an airplane as big as a battleship, because that's why it's called Dreadnought. Okay. The Sanders brothers who own this airplane, their mother of Ruth Sanders, they probably wouldn't like me saying that, but it's, it, it is named after the British uh, warships.